All right, this is one last minute. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So with the creative update out, you're probably going, what is creative mode? Well, this video is going to help you understand what creative mode is all about. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so you just got the creative mode update and you're wanting to know what's happening. Now, I'm playing with a build before the creative mode is out, so you'll see the groundwork update information here. That'll go away when the creative update is live. But what you will notice is a new item that says start new creative game. Now, if you do have a creative game already existing, you'll see a little paintbrush here that indicates that these were converted over to creative mode. Now, what happens when you go to creative mode? Well, you get this little warning here. Once you go into creative mode, it disables any kind of achievement awards that you might get in the game. And that makes sense. They don't want you to cheat on the achievements. They want you to get the achievements yourself. So once you convert, though, it's a one way street. You'll never be able to get the achievements on that save ever again. So keep that in mind. If you're going to convert saves over that you really want to use to do any kind of achievements that might happen in the future. You'll also see the creative mode settings dialog before you launch the game. And there are several options in here, well, such as a free oxygen, which is self-explanatory or it should be, uh, but it allows you to have oxygen without being attached to a tether. Another item that's pretty self-explanatory, which means you won't need power for your vehicles. It also means you won't need hydrazine for your thrusters if they're on a vehicle. Unlimited backpack power. So you never run out of backpack power when you're printing or using any kind of the, the terrain mods. You're invincible, meaning you can't die. You know, that's a good thing, right? You don't want a plant killing you off, but you can also be invisible to those hazardous plants so that they won't even recognize you. Now, remove decorators while painting is a great one to have. If you have this on, it will destroy the decorators, which means the trees and the rocks and, you know, all the other good stuff. But if you turn it off, you'll be able to paint without having to worry about destroying your environment. I actually really love this option a lot. Disable resource collection so you're not gathering resources as you're, um, you know, changing and modifying your world in creative mode. There's also an option for show terrain anchor status. Now the terrain anchor has this little bubble that appears and you can shut that on and off by using this option here. There is a light now for the cursor. So when you use your terrain tool, whether it be in normal mode or creative mode, there is actually a light on the cursor for the terrain tool. So think as you're deforming the terrain, you'll see a little light there. That actually helps with deforming the terrain in dark areas, but it's very neat to have to be able to turn it on and off. There's a flight speed control where you can increase your flight speed. And there is also a solar time multiplier, which is how fast the planets rotate. Or you can even shut it off completely and have them be static in space. Once you've set all your settings, all you have to do is hit the confirm button. You'll go into the new game configuration, just like you normally would for playing a new game. But it is flag for creative mode. And then you hit start new game. It'll ask you to confirm and you're off. When you first come into creative mode, you'll have this dialogue appear, this creative controls, which tells you all about the new tools that you have available to you and how to control them. The terrain tool itself has a new menu. That is, if, you're, if your terrain tool is out, you can hit R and you can see this new menu and we'll look at it in a minute. You can cycle through your terrain modes by using the C and V key, which are the alternate uh, if you're mapped to if you have them mapped to the alternate controls, they are the alternate controls. You can change the deform speed by holding down X and using the wheel on your mouse button or change the brush size by holding down Z and using the wheel on your mouse button. They've added some new player controls. Uh, several of them uh, relate to flight. So hitting the space bar twice will actually get you into flight mode. Holding the space bar down after that point will get you up higher and then holding shift will get you down lower. If you've ever played Minecraft, flying is very similar in Minecraft in creative mode. Uh, being able to duplicate a held item, you can hit the enter button and that will duplicate any item that you have in your hand, which is very neat and very useful for setting up an environment. And then also, if you want to delete that item, just pick it back up and hit the backspace key and that item will disappear. 
there are new terrain tool modes. You have add and subtract, which we've always had add and subtract off of the keyboard. You have flatten an eyedropper in a paint. Those are the two new ones. But by using the C and V key, you can set them to be a permanent add, subtract, flatten, paint, or eyedropper without having to hit a keyboard button, which is very, very handy when you're trying to work and mold your sculptures. There's also another dialogue that talks about the options for creative mode, which I've already covered, but you can go ahead and read them. And again, you can easily get into that by going into the Astropedia and going into creative mode if it doesn't pop up for you the first time. Now it is a little bit dark, which is perfect. So it can show you that the terrain tool has this light associated to it where it didn't have that light before. Beforehand, if you turned around and took off this cursor light, this is kind of what it looked like beforehand. Right. There is no light associated to this, but you can flip that back on once again by showing the cursor light so you can see. So here we are in a dark environment. Now I have my terrain tool set to not have light, and this is what it would normally look like when you're in a cave and you're trying to work in a cave. It's a little bit difficult, but if you have that option to turn that light on, look how much light you get when you point your terrain tool indicator. This really helps for being able to see and being able to form while you're in a dark area. So again, they gave us flight. Flight was an option. And like I said, all you have to do is hit the space bar twice and you will now be in flight mode. Holding it down allows you to go up and holding shift down allows you to go down. Now you can adjust the speed of flight by changing this flight speed slider. The normal flight speed is this. It's not very fast, it's about the speed of a rover. But if you adjust that flight speed, let's say all the way up to 10, you can see how fast you zoom across the terrain. Pretty insane. You can quickly get from point A to point B without any problems whatsoever. Uh, you can also get lost pretty fast too because um, it's very easy to uh, find yourself on the other side of the world quickly. A couple other options in creative mode besides the flight speed are actually the time of day, the orbit of the sun, and also the solar multiplier. If I was actually to change the solar multiplier, look how fast the planets zip around. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So you can uh, go from day to night extremely quickly. I, I don't know how helpful this is other than being in a video because it looks really cool, but it's nice to be able to slow down the rotation of the orbits, the solar time, and not have to worry about it moving at all, honestly. Again, you can change the orbit of the sun to make it daytime for you and or time of day, depending on how you want your environment to look or uh, how you want your day to look. I'm gonna move my flight speed down. I like it at four. I think four is a, a pretty decent speed to be able to work with. You know, when you're trying to mold an environment, like let's say I wanted to shape this mountain, this flight speed looks uh, actually great. It's not too fast and it's not too slow. Let's look at some of those terrain deformation tools and the new options that we have. So as you can see, my terrain tool is set to drill down and it automatically drills down no problem whatsoever. If I was to hold control, it'll flatten. These are all the same and all standard. If I hold alt, it'll actually build up. But wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to hold those buttons down while I'm using the terrain tool? Well, now you can. So if you're in creative mode, you can use the C and V or the alternate keys and it will set the deformation kind of permanently. So you can work with it until you want to change it again. This allows you to be able to manipulate the terrain pretty quickly and easily uh, if you know you wanted to do something. You can always also just flip back by hitting any one of the keyboard commands like I had hit flatten and now I'm back to the standard terrain tool mode where it's controlled off of the keyboard. Down is default. Again, I can cycle through. I is up, there's flatten. And here is the eyedropper. So if I wanted to sample a color, all you have to do is left click to sample that color and then switch it over to paint mode, which is the next one over and paint. And you can see I'm even painting the rock surface. So this is now rock terrain one. I love the fact that we can sample and paint any of the colors and terrain types. Let's look at some more options for the terrain tool. 
So with the terrain tool out, if you hit the R button, you'll come up with another dialog that allows you to work with the deformation speed, the size, and the range. And the range happens to be the distance that you can use your tool. By default, it's pretty uh, close. You can see as, as I go far away, my uh, cursor turns red and I can no longer deform the terrain. If I was to change that to be, I don't know, the farthest you could possibly have it, and then go back into it, you'll see that my terrain tool no longer turns red over here. It'll actually wind up turning red somewhere far away in this distance, which gives you a lot of room and a lot of distance to be able to work with a manipulating terrain. Let's talk about deformation speed and size of the terrain tool. Size of the terrain tool should be self-explanatory. We get these in mods in normal mode where you can go narrow or you can go wide, but you can get a very, very large terrain tool by increasing the size up to 700. Now, deformation speed is how quickly you can deform the terrain. I have it set to zero. And so you're not gonna see any kind of deformation whatsoever. There's nothing that's going to happen. I have it set to up and uh, it's not doing it, right? If I set it to down, it's still not doing it. I'm not picking up any of the terrain. Let's resample this color so that I have green and I'm no longer painting with um, uh, this rock environment. Okay, now that we have that set back to green, let's go ahead and change the deformation speed so you can see what I'm saying. I'm going to leave the size at 700 and the range at 850, 8,500. But I'm going to change the deformation speed just a little bit. I want to show you how well this deformation speed works, especially when you're trying to uh, curve angles and uh, get a shape or and or angle that you might possibly want. With the deformation speed down low, the terrain really goes slowly. You can decrease this even more to have it at a point one, and you can see how slow that it moves. It's not eating up the terrain as fast as you might possibly think. And, and that's great because it's easy to kind of slide over and smooth out areas when you're trying to do some sort of sculptures and manipulation of the terrain. Now, conversely, if I wanted to eat up terrain, just absolutely change your deformation speed all the way up to max, which is five. You'll see the rings change when you um, change your deformation speed. Now, your deformation speed, if you notice... If you can, you can do this by holding down the X button and using your mouse wheel and you can change that deformation speed and you can see the indicator is actually adding bars to it, right? The same is true for increasing the brush size and reducing the brush size. You can do that by holding down Z and using the mouse wheel. So that's a handy way to change your deformation speed without having to go back to the menu. Same with the size. But if I was to sample terrain with the deformation speed set up to five, you can see how fast I'm eating through the terrain. They just absolutely chunk through the terrain with no problem whatsoever. Destroying the environment is uh, nice and easy. It actually makes drilling to the core very, very simple if you wanted to do that. Again, you're in creative mode. I. I don't really see the sense of going down to the core unless, of course, you're trying to make some sort of scenario down there. But, you know, there is the ability to be able to do that. Of course, if you want to wipe out a mountain really fast because you wanted something different there or even to help you carve the mountain, you could do that as well by changing that deformation speed and having a little bit finer control on how quickly stuff disappears. The last two options I want to look at for the terrain options or ignore hardness, which tells your terrain tool to completely ignore the hardness of rock. So you don't have to worry about having any kind of drill mod on your terrain tool while you're in creative mode. It does, if you turn it off, you still have the same effect with rock. So if I was to have my terrain tool out and I had uh, the checkbox for ignore hardness off, you can see I get that same effect that I'm drilling through rock. It, again, it's going to affect you only if you don't have that checkbox selected. The last thing is the color sampler. Now, now the way the color sampler works is you're seeing a palette of colors and then also a palette of the colors that are on this particular planet. They could not list all of the colors inside of this 
uh, dialogue. It's just too big. And it's also a resource problem to manage those colors as well. There really isn't that easy of a way to go and get colors. You can go and sample colors on other planets. I, in my initial test, the terrain analyzer didn't quite work, but maybe they got that resolved uh, since they've come out with the update. You're going to have to test it for yourself. All right. Well, thank you for watching my video on understanding creative mode. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, if it was, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please think about subscribing. We have a great community here. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.